my secret, just do something that ain't nobody ever done before, but make it sound like something that's always been there forever. Welcome to This Filipino American Life, a podcast that explores the nuanced experiences of Filipinos in the United States at Ibapa. My name is Elaine Delalis, and I am joined by my fellow hosts, Ryan Carpio, Joe Bernardo, and Mike, producer Mike. Oh, oh no. boo. I pam, 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 pam. Oh. Oh. I thought we were going to try a different sound this time. Boo this That's woman. <laughs> boo earns. Boo, boo. Earns. <laughs> It was supposed to be for the t pals. Speaking of which, the t pal of this episode is Jordan Tabij. Yeah, really? Yeah, nice. Jordan. 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 Montel Jordan. No, I'm kidding. Jordan Tabij. Thank you for being a t pal. We haven't figured out a sound for t pals yet. Not yet. Not pew yet. pew pew. But yeah, hello. We are going to talk about one of my favorite things, and Mike is annoyed that I am. It's a favorite thing. We're going to talk about Food. wrestling. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wrestling! Wrestling! Wait, what? What's what do you mean? Wrestling? Like wrestling? Like professional wrestling? Like professional oh, wrestling? Oh, this should be interesting. Yeah. So we had Berto uh, Ponce mm-hmm. write that article about uh, Bullet Club, mm-hmm. and we sold the bullet club shirts because it's a play on bullet club which is a wrestling faction um and very popular shirt by the way it's a very popular shirt and it was limited run and we don't have any sorry sorry i still get asked about it oh that's nice direct them to subscribe but yeah um and so i just want to ask you guys a question do you like wrestling (laughs) mike mike (laughs) (laughs) um i don't hate it Yay, Mike doesn't hate wrestling. It's yeah. not something that I would choose to do in my free time. Aww. Mike's like, I don't not not I mean, not, 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 not It's not like I have a choice like Monday nights when like Raw is on and like you're is that watching. Still on? Yeah, Raw is still on. Oh my god. So, so like, it's SmackDown? SmackDown's on Tuesdays. Yeah. Tuesdays. So. And then on Wednesdays it's Lucha Underground on the L Ray network. However, our Sling TV is under uh it doesn't have it right now because they have a dispute, so I haven't watched Lucha. Although if you are watching Lucha, you might see us in it. You might see Mike because Wait, Mike, what? Because we went to a Lucha Underground taping and Mike is um He's a wrestler? In, he's he's in wearing the a back, mask. <laughs> he is wearing a mask. Oh nice in the background. Um, so story about that is they handed out these signs to hold. It's a, it was a lucha mask and it said, I believe. And Mike put holes on the, on the piece of paper and he put his glasses on it. So he wore the sign Nice. the whole time we were at the taping and the camera was on Mike multiple times uh, throughout the taping ooh. and he would just pose with his arms crossed. So looking he looked serious. He looked like a character and yeah. I kept thinking, Oh, he's going to get on TV so much. So look out for a lucha libro. That, nice. was, that was the character Mike created, Lucha Libro. <laughs> <laughs> His uh, move was uh, something biblioteca. <laughs> I should have been Lecheng Libro. <laughs> I Lecheng Libro. <laughs> but what about you, Ryan? What about you, Joe? So I loved wrestling uh, when I was a a wee lad um actually you growing up on those streets <laughs> those streets in the 60 Philippines. years ago <laughs> so <laughs> actually this is i just i just remembered this the first thing i ever saw on television in the united states was a recorded uh wrestling tape it wasn't the playboy <laughs> channel <laughs> no that's expensive <laughs> Dif- different wrestling <laughs> no different wrestling no uh my brother had recorded a six hour long uh video of like all these wrestling things because uh he, he knew that we we like wrestling you know growing up we were like all big hulk hogan fans and, yeah you know you knew andre the giant but that was the first thing we ever saw so when we came to the States. The first thing we ever watched was a pre-recorded six-hour-long wrestling um, tape of That's cool. uh, yeah, 1987, Whoa. So, which is really, really cool. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, at, at some point, I stopped watching. What, what point do you think you stopped watching? I think, I think after, uh, I don't know, like just the availability of it wasn't there for me uh, when I was uh, maybe around my early teens. And then, funnily enough, in my later teens, it kind of 
popped back up um, with WCW and WWF back then and all these like different things you can watch on on Thursdays was uh, WCW and then on yes. Mondays was um, uh, Raw. W- yeah, it was, was Raw. WWF. Yeah, WWF. So I remember that picking up and then some of my brother's friends were all into it as well. Mm-hmm. And there's all these new characters, you know, because in the 80s it was completely different. There was some some characters that you grew up knowing and and um it was great it was a, a it was a fun kind of like soap opera ish yes um thing yes, that you could follow it is yeah. what so, about you joe i got into it at the kind of height of Hulk, Hulk, hulkamania yes yeah um, when i was a kid and i was so into it i actually went to one of the wrestling <gasps> shows at no the, way at the la sports arena nice how cool Hulk Hogan was wrestling Mr. Perfect. Oh my god. That was a that was Mr. the main card. Perfect. Yes. Well, I'm gonna look at that right. Okay. Yeah. What? That's so cool. So yeah, I grew up with like uh Ultimate Warrior was my favorite wrestler. Oh, that's so problematic, but I'll explain why later. Okay. <laughs> oh, is it? Uh because it turned out he was like a well, Hulk Hogan is also like a racist, but uh, oh. Ultimate Warrior is like so, oh, wow. was also like a racist. And, well, I think like, a lot of them were anti, like that whole generation, <laughs> like anti LGBT. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, they also a lot of them grew up in the South. And, yeah, not to disparage the South, but you know, you <laughs> have you had do have a tradition <laughs> down there. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so yeah, Ultimate Warrior. Uh, was it in 1990? Uh, yeah, around there. Yeah, and then I got into like a uh, Heart Foundation. Oh my yeah. god! And I would I would rent the old videos from like um, old know, WrestleMania, the yeah. old WrestleMania, yeah. just to know like history. Yeah. So you know, I didn't know about WrestleMania three, and that supposedly was like the greatest WrestleMania ever. <laughs> and I watched it. I was like, wow, this is really cool. Oh, you know, man. that's when um, Hulk Hogan uh, body slammed. Andre, Andre the Giant, the Giant yeah. for the first time. Yeah. Not the first time, but yeah. that was very That's climactic. when they put Hulk over. Yeah. And then once Ultimate Warrior started Despair. like declining, yeah. Yeah. that's when I stopped watching because then they kind of rehashed Hulk Hogan as the hero and I kind of moved on from him. So yeah. that's when I kind of declined. But then was again... Was that like when you were like a teenager or... No, it, no. Was, it was really short, 89 to 91. Yeah. So I got into that and then in college... I got into it really short again, just for like a year, just because everybody around me was watching yeah. wrestling. Yeah, again. yeah. That was like height of like NWO. Yeah, yeah. attitude era. Attitude era. Yeah. Uh, so that, that was during my college years, and then, um, and then, and then, yeah. So then that's it. So yeah. I, I stopped wrestling since. But then I do follow TJP. Yeah, TJ yeah. Perkins on Twitter nice. because yeah. he's like he's probably Filipino. the first yeah. Filipino. And the first uh, out, outward Filipino, Filipino yeah. ever. If you're and listening, TJ, please contact us. <laughs> I mean, we gave you a Bullet Club shirt. I mean, come on. And no, we that want was awesome. to. Yeah. That was awesome. The show. One day. Um, so my history with wrestling is that I was like you, watched it as a kid, like on Saturday on TV. And then I got older and then got into other things. Mm -hmm. So I stopped watching it. But then in college around the same time, like the attitude era time, Mm -hmm. um, I, I would go in and out and I would go in and out because Birdo, who Mm -hmm. is like the bullet club guy with, with me, um, he would talk to me about wrestling and I would like be like, Oh yeah, I totally remember that too. And, um, he would he invited me over because he would watch Raw at his apartment, mm-hmm. and um, so I went over to his house one day, and um, so I get to the apartment. He opens the door, I walk in, and my eyes, like my eyes, get immediately start to burn. My nose starts to run, and it's like that scene where Homer Simpson like his eyes crust over, <laughs> and I realize like oh, I say to Bruno. <laughs> do you have cats? And Berta's like, actually, yeah. He had like two or three, I think. And I was like, I can't be here. I can't breathe. And so like, I, I was like, sorry, I can't watch wrestling with you. So I like, left and I immediately could breathe after. So that was me. Like in college, I tried to get into it. And then I I, rest, I watched on my own. And then I, I kind of gave up. I just, 
I recently got back into it because Birdo for my birthday in 2016 sent me a WWE network card and um, a list of matches to watch, which included a lot of the TJP Mm -hmm. matches. And he had just been, um, he was the inaugural cruiserweight champion. So Birdo was like, Hey, we should do this. And like, TFL started in 2016 mm-hmm. so that's kind of like it's serendipitous that way and because of Birdo I went, got super into wrestling again and I've been to several independent shows and Mike has gone to them all <laughs> um, we have uh, gone to multiple WWE events mm-hmm. multiple being two but Mike went to one so that was funny. And then I've been to two New Japan Pro Wrestling shows, which is New Japan is a different um, wrestling company. But yeah, needless to say, I kind of like wrestling. Yeah, I, it was it was such a it was such a weird <laughs> thing for a, I think imagine like a kid to be kind of into, um, just because I don't know I don't I don't know if, uh, looking back at it it was if it was supposed to be like very kid friendly. Of course, the the characters were like over the top, and yeah. some of them were were really like there were characters and there were uh i think that's what kind of drew drew me as a young kid to like yeah. know you know um like the voices and like the 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 sunglasses you know superman they're like Randy, real life Savage. cartoons yeah, yeah. And, and they but, did have cartoons and they did have cartoons yeah. i watched that too <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's kind of funny like the acceptance that we had for like folks like pretty much fighting in the ring and having this drama um for for kids to kind of to kind of emulate or I, I don't know i thought it was funny i never though i never uh i never f- like jumped off of a like a rooftop a or, anything or anything like that anything. but dude when we were kids we would copy like, those moves yeah. you know and we would do like suplexes and stuff i remember we had a rule wow. like like no pile drivers was one of our rules <laughs> <laughs> and because they banned it right they banned yes. some of the pile driver moves and stuff so when we were we were like horsing around as kids you know we we'd, we'd wrestle i remember so. i did the boston crab to my neighbor oh, what yeah What's and the I, boston crab oh it's a it's a wrestling it's a, it's a submission move it's yeah. like it's what chris jericho does it's so <laughs> so it's, it's like if you if you sat on somebody and you have your legs in a twist you have to you have to, you have to show it okay yeah. rick rick the model mortel oh <laughs> man i don't remember that <laughs> with his cologne arrogance oh <laughs> 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 dude, dude, they, we had, they had some of the best characters. They had, uh, they had a lot of racist characters. They did too. They were super, they were racist. super racist. Mr. Fuji. Oh my God, Mr. Fuji. Tito Santana. <laughs> That's right. King Haku. That. Oh man. So King, I saw King Haku wrestle this past weekend. Oh wow. Because he's a part of Bullet Club <laughs> with his two sons. Oh. So that's the thing. Like now with the resurgence of wrestling, like a lot of the wrestlers that we saw as kids have they still come back um, or they've, they're still around. Um, but I'm not, I, I want to roll it back. It's not a lot because it's kind of sad, but wrestlers that we grew up watching, like their lifespan was very short because the, mm-hmm. the promotions didn't take care of their bodies. Mm-hmm. Like now wrestlers are like, they're doing CrossFit and they watch what they eat and they don't like notoriously drink and party, mm-hmm. which if you watch the movie, like the wrestler, like mm-hmm. that's kind of like the story. Like, um, that they just they didn't take right. care of their bodies they just put themselves through tables and whatnot and then would drink and then go from city to city mm-hmm. um, but now wrestlers take better care of themselves because mm-hmm. if I listen to a lot of wrestling podcasts like tights and fights that's one of my favorite ones and they talk of they were they were talking about a match and it was like Eddie Guerrero Chris Benoit and I think Jericho or it might have been someone else and the per, one of the people on the podcast was sad because two of the three people in that match are dead. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, oh shit, like so many people from that certain era, mm-hmm. they all passed away because they weren't taken care of like health wise. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's kind of like, it's, there's a nostalgia factor for us because we see these people and you're like, oh my God, that's so awesome. Like I saw King Haku last week and I was just like, holy crap, I remember you watching you as a kid. Um, and so I'm lucky and we're lucky that we get that because he uh, like took care of himself, I guess, in mm-hmm. some way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Uh, is this generation wrestlers, are they as racist, the, the characters, as it was before? <sighs> So some of them, like their characters, can be like stereotypically. Yeah, like, but I don't. Are they ironically racist? I don't <laughs> think it's any fault of their own. I think it's the fault of like the storylines that get written for them. So like mm. there is this 
one Indian wrestler, his name is Jinder Mahal, and he was the champ for a while. Mm -hmm. And they build him like he's from India, and he would talk about, like, I'm the Maharaja, and you guys don't like me because I'm Indian. Like, that was his story. But the dude is actually, (laughs) he's from Canada. He's not Indian. I mean, he's Indian, like his ethnicity, right? Or or maybe Pakistani, (laughs) but, but. He's from Canada, but that's how they build him. And that's yeah. his story. Like, yeah. I'm the foreigner. And Shinsuke Nakamura is this big wrestler from Japan who's who's here now in the WWE. And a lot of his story now is, like, um, he's, like, a heel. So his heel turn was, like, oh, I'm the bad foreigner. Heel but is the bad guy, right? Heel is a bad guy. And f- uh, baby face or face is, like, you're a good guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing I like about wrestling is, like, it totally is a soap opera. Yeah, yeah it's a soap yeah. opera. You follow the story, and then they do like crazy athletic mm-hmm. things, and you're like, "Holy crap!" They just put you through a table, or right. you went through a ladder, or I cannot believe you flipped over an ambulance. Right. Like there's stupid shit like that, and it's entertaining. But there is an element where you're like, "Oh, it's kind of racist." Because yeah. I watched, I watched Raw a couple weeks ago. And there's a dude like in the line of the cameras, like where the rings are, and they had like a MAGA sign. Yeah. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and they they're really quick about cutting away because they don't want the signs sure, to, to sure. take away from the wrestling. But it just was like, oh, like it takes me out of it because like I want to enjoy it, yeah. like for the. But like sometimes wrestling fans can be a little sucky. Well, I think it also is part of like a. I imagine that the professional wrestling folks kind of came from an undergroundish. Uh, following, I don't know. I, I mean, my dad been watching wrestling since like the seventies, so yeah. that's why I, I started watching it. But you know, I started thinking about the the production of it and how big it got. Yeah. You know how WWF became WWE and how how just huge the market was. Do you remember they yeah. they, they started a football? The moment they XFL. To do, XFL. Yeah. They're and trying they, to do it again. They're trying to I do it again. Really, <laughs> I didn't even know that. But um, but it just got so so big, and I I remember, um, that the the ch- the changes even like the the size of the venues. Um, yeah, because they go from like five thousand seater basketball arenas yeah. to like a football stadiums. Right. right. And um, as a kid, I, Joe, I don't know if you remember this. If you came into wrestling late, but Channel Thirteen. Yes. Um, you used to have the ladies wrestling. Yeah, gorgeous Glow. ladies of wrestling. Yeah. I love Glow. I wasn't allowed to watch that. Like, Why? Like, I, it was just a weird thing. Like, either my grandma didn't want me to watch it or something, but I don't know if my dad was really into it. It was Saturday. My dad wanted to do, like, gardening yeah. work or something. But, um, you know, you would happen to go on it um, when you flip into the channels, and you're like, oh, channel 13 is is Glow. Yeah. And uh, I, I never got, I saw glimpses of it, but I never got to see it. Yeah. And I wish I could have seen more of that, I guess, like looking back, like that would have been kind of interesting. Now with the emergence of, you know, the of Netflix Glow, show. Glow Netflix show, yeah. But even like the WWF, they started incorporating like women into their, into yeah. their storylines in a very different way. Some of them became like really um, popular as like wrestlers. China. Yeah. 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 So it's funny like, like Keebler and all that. Yeah. yeah. So like a lot of like wrestling for me was hard to be wa- to get into cuz it was super misogynistic, yeah. right? Yeah. And so you have to like take your myself out of it. But yeah. um lately like there's like a women's revolution that's what they're calling it. Um but the women aren't just eye candy. Like in the past that's what it always felt like besides China like mm-hmm. cuz she was like insanely strong and whatnot. Um but then there would be like it would be like lingerie matches. That's what you would see, yeah. right? Like that's, it was mm-hmm. totally like, it was just TNA. Like mm-hmm. literally it's what it was for. Um, but now like the women, they're like crazy, like CrossFit athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the wrestlers that I like totally love, her name's Charlotte Flair. She's Ric Flair's daughter. Mm. She's insane. Woo. She does the woo. <laughs> the, she does the woo. She wears the robes. Her, her signature move is that she does the, um, she does Ric Flair's. Um, uh, I'm blanking because my brain. Yeah, is I forgot. Right. I don't know what you're talking about. But she does the. Um, the finishing his finishing the, move. His finishing move, but she does it in a bridge. So she does the leg lock thing that he that Ric Flair would do, but then she does like a yoga bridge, which makes it like harder to get out to. Like it's another move. I'm gonna look it up because I feel like an asshole that I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think any of the Asian wrestlers were Filipino growing up? Not, it, it didn't even, no. It didn't yeah. even like dawn upon me to 
think of it in that kind of sense. I think I think I uh, kind of what Elaine said. I saw them as char- a bunch of characters. Yeah. Um, but no, I didn't even think about that. I was always wish uh, secretly wishing that Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was Filipino. Oh really? Oh, he's from Hawaii, so yeah, it's at least that. Maybe. I was a big uh, maybe Yokozuna Superfly, Yoko Zuna, no? Superfly no. fan. <laughs> it's the Superfly. figure. It was the figure four. <laughs> I should have just realized that. that? that is, I'm like, why can't I come with that? But um, Charlotte is called like the eight because okay. she like she eight? she does this bridge that makes it elevates it. It's insane to look at, but yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I used to always think that like all the Samoan wrestlers were Filipino. So I was like, you're brown, I brown, we're brown together. Well, but now, like you guys have referenced, there are now like more, you, yeah. know, you know, like very like out there Filipino wrestlers right like course tjp so tjp is one um jeff cobb who is matanza on lucha underground is another but oh. you can't see his face that's like the pro- one thing mm-hmm. in lucha underground but jeff cobb if you look him up he's another but he, now he's also in new japan right? he's in new japan jeff cobb is like he was a weightlifter for guam in the olympics right? in the olympics mm. so he has like a tattoo of the olympic rings and like guam on his back but he's from hawaii um there's b-boy who's from san diego so he's filipino too is he a b-boy that's his uh i think MO? that might have been his thing but i don't know what it was. yeah doesn't he do like like flares and stuff yeah i don't know he what? wrestles in like a t-shirt and basketball shorts <laughs> like wow. his finishing move is like <laughs> kicking you while he's doing like a <laughs> that windmill cool. that is super filipino dude yeah. oh my god part of a dance crew from san diego oh my god that'd be amazing <laughs> um there's a there's this dude who Berto and I say he looks like Earl. His name is Fala Ba or something. He's on Impact Wrestling. He's like this 400 pound Filipino dude. Oh, <laughs> He's man. huge. Earl or Pascas Earl. Earl, um, yeah, Earl Bailon. Yeah. He, he could be Earl's twin. And then but Earl's not 400 pounds, I don't think. But <laughs> 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 and then, sorry, <laughs> edit that part out. <laughs> um, but then another wrestler, like speaking of the women's revolution, is Chris Wolf. Yeah. Mm. So, oh, and Shotsky Blackheart. Mm-hmm. So she's also Filipino too. So um, Chris and Shotsky are also, they have Bullet Club, Bullet Club shirts. And Chris, um, Berto became friends with her like online. Mm-hmm. And then um, it kind of just led to like, we sent her a shirt in Japan when she was living in Japan because she became like a wrestler in Japan and then just transitioned into when she came to LA to do independent wrestling shows that we were going to be at. We would talk to her there and it somehow turned into the, sh- the interview that we'll hear after this talk right now. <laughs> nice. So what, what, what can we expect from that? From the interview. Um, well, just so you know, you won't. It'll. We took place at the park's finest, so it's in a restaurant. So there's a lot of ambient noise. So just, just be aware that you may hear some other people in the background and mm-hmm. whatnot. Um, but you'll hear Chris's story. You'll hear about why she's a why she goes with Chris Wolf. Um, how she got to Japan. How she started wrestling. How what else, Mike? You were there. And uh, about all the food that we eat at the park. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were eating dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but oh yeah, like I mean, I think like um, it, it like as as Elaine was going through the progression of how it led up to the interview that we ended up doing, it was just kind of like from you know something that she was into to like her friends trying to get back into it to us trying to go to shows and then starting to kind of like identify like oh here's all the Filipino wrestlers let's reach out to them you know kind of like getting a feel for kind of like you know can we get them to join Balut Club too like isn't your dream guest our dream guest is our dream get is to give a Bullet Club shirt to Dave Bautista. Oh yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah, if we could get Dave Bautista a shirt <laughs> and he can wear it, we would. Or even on the podcast, that would be if like listening. Amazing. Hello, yeah. Dave Bautista. And then, and then just to to the point where we had you know an interview with Chris Wolf and. You know, even got the chance to hang out with her a little bit, like just recently. Yes. Um, up in the bay, and so I think like. On the, on the one hand, it's kind of like there's like this growing kind of group of like wrestlers who just happen to be Filipino, um, but like connecting with them and letting them know that there is a fan base of Filipinos who are into wrestling too that are out there kind of supporting them and championing them. And you know, Bullet Club is I think a prime example of that. So. Yeah, and I think it's awesome that um, they're not trying to be something else. Like mm-hmm. um, they're not like you know, there's all these people like 
when we were growing up, people thought like Nia Peoples was Filipino. I have no idea if she is, but I think we she is partly. We all like but... claimed her, right? Or or, or like <laughs> she just didn't claim herself. I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, like you know, like certain, <laughs> certain certain actors or actresses, like we all thought they were Filipino, but you never got that confirmation. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of nice that these wrestlers, like they totally there, yeah. uh, like use. They say that they're Filipino. They're proud that they're Filipino. Yeah, like Shotzi's like the filthy Filipino is one of her like. Yeah. <laughs> said, so. <laughs> I mean, they're not. Hawaiian? <laughs> They're not Hawaiian. <laughs> Although Jeff comes from Hawaii, so he has a Hawaiian stuff. But, but he, he he always says like his mom's Filipino. So yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So I'm really excited to bring this to everybody. Um, folks have been asking like on Twitter after like oh, we posted cool. social media about it, and um, who knew that a four eleven woman could dead fireman carry a man a full-grown man because that is what she does in a picture <laughs> that we took at the, park's nice. at the park's finest so you will all see that on this uh on the cover page of this but yeah thank you for listening uh enjoy hey ryan do you have any extra dollars <laughs> i'm hungry actually. <laughs> uh i i don't have any extra dollars for you joe what are you going to use it then for? Um, I'm thinking of uh, giving my extra dollars to uh, T Fowl's Patreon account. Wait, T Fowl has a Patreon account? <laughs> yeah. Patreon.com slash T Fowl Podcast. That's right. Patreon.com slash T Fowl Podcast. If you want to help T Fowl continue its great quality work, you can contribute some money to us monthly. Go to Patreon.com slash T Fowl Podcast and you can give your extra dollars to us. Hey Joe, how much does your internet cost? Hey, a lot. I don't know. After that's, after that's girly. <laughs> <laughs> hey Mike, how much does equi- this equipment cost? A lot. <laughs> oh hey Ryan, man. how much does your brain cost? <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have. <laughs> um, as you can see, we spend money to produce this free programming to you, um, and we could use your help. So. Find us on patreon.com slash podcast and see if you can help us out. Thank you. Thank you. Meat, 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 meat. meat, meat. meat. Ah. All right. This is so cool. All right. So this is this Filipino American life. It's a special wrestling edition. And we have a special guest. Can you introduce yourself, special guest? Oh, hello there. My name is Chris. I wrestle ladies and gentlemen on the weekends and during the week. I, um, I don't know, I dance with uh, issues of existential crisis. Hi. And she's a wolf. Yep. Wolf. Uh, and I'm Filipino. And she's Filipino. Me. And she's a wrestler. Yeah. This is so exciting. And we have a special guest who may or may not talk. And his name is Birdo. Hi, I'm Birdo. I don't say much. That was except a lot. when it counts. Oh, no, Birdo. <laughs> Good one, Bird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, on the podcast, I talk about like my love of wrestling and Mike, producer Mike. Hold on, I can't do that without doing this. Producer Mike. Oh my God! It doesn't make it's not enough loud. No. There you go. You get a rap air horns. Um, I drag him to wrestling shows. Ryan doesn't really know, and Joe doesn't really know either, other than like the 80s and watching like WWF and like cartoons and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, Bruno wrote a story for the blog about wrestling and how, like the importance of it in his life, and then it's his fault. I've told the story, it's his fault that I'm into wrestling again because for my birthday in 2016, he sent me a WWE network card. Oh, shit. and then Mike had to go to seven independent wrestling shows. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> but, and so the goal when we started all this wrestling stuff, there was a goal, was like, we wanted to create the Bullet Club shirt, yes. which you rock and sport all the time, which is awesome. I love the shirt. Um, and we sent it to a bunch of wrestlers. Who did we send it to, Birdo? Uh, TJP, Chris, of course, uh, Jeff Cobb, DJ Z. We gave one to Shotzi Blackheart. Is that it? I feel like there's... B-Boy. B-Boy, of course. One of my favorites. 
uh, our white uh, whale is Batista. Yeah, if we can send it to Batista. Also, I don't really have that size anymore, but if he can fit in a medium, maybe we can get you a shirt, yeah, Batista. <laughs> you can make it a very tight toy tank top. You could cut the sleeves off. Yeah, that well, would be cool. You can wear the shirts as sleeves. <laughs> but yeah, so one of our bucket lists is to talk to a Filipino American wrestler. Oh. And now we have a wolf here to oh. talk to. Hello. So, that being said, I have a list of questions. Some of them are wrestling related. Most of them are wrestling related. Are they like, about my mom? No, okay, I don't think good. so. Maybe not. I mean, I don't mind. <laughs> so, well, the first question I'm going to ask mm -hmm. is, what does Kushida smell like? Um, he smells like a clean man. There you um, go. His costume is clean. He smells a little, you know, Gatsby wipes? Gatsby? In Japan. What are Gatsby wipes? They're like these little uh, cleaning wipes that have like a kind of like deodorant smell, oh. but like Axe deodorant kind of. Got it. Gatsby is, I guess, the Japanese version, version of Axe. Yes, but maybe less uh, like strong. Oh, it's like subtle. There you go. She does subtle. He's subtle. <laughs> or no? Are you happy I asked that question? I'm very happy you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So that was the first question because you really like Kushida, right? Yeah, like. Kushida, like his whole gimmick is Back to the Future. He wears like the, the denim shirt and the orange vest. Like one of his finishing maneuvers is the hover lock. So if you love Back to the Future, you gotta love Kushida. It's a given. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he is not here, but the Chris Wolf, <laughs> Wolf is here. So no segue. Yeah. Get ready. The entire interview is actually about Kushida. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> and then he does the podcast and be like, oh my god, you're brown. You can be Filipino, maybe. <laughs> First like, question, what does Chris Wolf smell like? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, should we, should we ask all wrestlers from that point on? Like meat, <laughs> maybe something unwashed. <laughs> she smells like a wolf, okay. I actually took a shower for you guys. Thanks. I was like going, I'm really bad with like showering because I don't, well, I've been told that I don't smell. They could also be lying to me, but I like stay in my sweat because I get lazy and I'm just like, ah, to the gym, good day. Oh wait, I'm gonna go outside and it's hot outside. I don't need to shower right away. And then I forget. And then it's the next day and it's like, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym again, yay! <laughs> so you share that with Mike because Mike says that he doesn't smell. <laughs> he doesn't sweat. Oh, but you don't say that he doesn't smell or sweat? Oh, Mike, he doesn't smell or Okay, sweat. yeah, high five, Mike. <laughs> Boom. You share the non-stinky gene. Good for you. I am a stinky person. Sorry, so I take a shower. <laughs> I mean, it's probably better. Twist for my me. arm. I'm gonna be clean. <laughs> or douse myself in baby cologne. Oh, oh. one or the other, or both. <laughs> but so this is about you. This is an easy question. Okay. How would you get into wrestling? YouTube. YouTube. And asking people about what they think I should do with my life. Because I was again going through an existential crisis when I was working as a teacher in Japan. Um, and then I was just talking to people, and this one substitute lady, Japanese lady, was like, Hey, Chris, have you ever heard of Women's Pro Wrestling? You seem like a very active girl. Because, like, at the time, I was, like, cycling miles upon miles just to, like, I don't know, find something inside and just couldn't get... I, I was searching for something. Yeah. And she was like, well, pro wrestling, I saw it on TV. You should check it out. So I YouTube that shit, found stardom, and was like, How do I... How is this a job? So how do you do that as a job? Um, well, for me, since I was living in Tokyo at the time, I yeah. messaged the promoter, well, the, uh, I messaged the website. Yeah. Gave them my a video introduction of myself because I was like, I don't know how this works. This is who I am. Yeah. How do I become a pro wrestler? He's like, come to the venue, check out a show, let me meet you first and we'll figure it out. This is all in Japanese, by the way, so I'm like paraphrasing because whatever. I'm sure it's a lot longer in Japanese. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Lots of like, oh, um, so I go there, I watch a show, fall even more in love with it, and he's like, okay, well, you can train with us, and if you pass the test when we offer it, you can debut. What is training? Training is three hours of, depending on the day. Oh, so wow. there's always cardio in the beginning. Um, for the green girls, it always starts with like a run around like a pretty decent amount. I don't know, maybe it's a three to five kilometers, something like that. Then we do one 
warm up, which is also a lot of cardio. Yeah. Then we do like the rolls, and we do lots of jumping, then other like muscle training, I guess, body resistance stuff. Working on uh, punching bags, kicking punching bags. Wow. Um, then we do sparring, and then we like we we started. I think we're all kind of we're new. Because uh-huh. um, I came in as the sixth season, I guess, and then the the one before me was the fifth, and those people were Asuka and Hazuki. So the class before you had Asuka? Uh, no, uh, Asuka Ramey. Oh. She was, um, do you know who that is? Because I do not know. I've heard of her. It's okay. Asuka in WWE was Kana in Japan. Yeah. Got it. Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> But um, no, she was uh, half Japanese and half American. Oh. But uh, she got injured in her first match against Tazuki and then wasn't able to come back. Oh. Um, but the class that I was in actually had a lot more people. Uh, it was me, Momo, Watanabe, and um, Hiromi. Do you know Hiromi? I do not. No? Oh, okay. I know the other names. <laughs> well, I'm like, I differ. So he's like my. Um, Your go-to for Japanese. He's stuff. my. Um, he's my wrestling sensei. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He's my mentor. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, that was funny. I'm gonna just go with that from now on, mentor. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like a lot of the stuff, like I honestly am like rich to Ferdinando. Like, what is this? Mm. Like kind of like when we were at the AWS Rise show where we saw you. Yeah. Um, I didn't know who was on the card. Yeah. I didn't know like anything, but Bruno was like, it's going to be a good show. I'm like, all right. So I go and I'm like, oh my God, this is a really good show. Mm. And that is the show where I learned that Mike has been paying attention to wrestling. Oh yeah? Because that was the show. I had no idea who was on the card. Mm-hmm. And then whose music were to, were to start, Mike? Mike doesn't want to say, but it was a Pina Colada song, and Mike said out loud to me, is Joey Ryan on the card? And I said, I have no idea. Why are you asking me that? And then who came out? But Joey Ryan. And from this point on, I said, Mike's favorite wrestler is Joey Ryan. Is it Mike? Is it? Yes? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, no. It's an admission. It's an admission. That's the closest thing we've ever gotten. It's a comedy factor. Oh my god, because he usually says we know very adamantly. This is amazing. Yay. It's the wrestling episode. Yay! Dreams do come true. Mike admitted he liked Joy Ryan. That's so cool. So, like, you did training. And then, so like, how does it work? Like, is stardom like New Japan where there's like young boys and like young lions, and then you like have to like like move up in the in the in the, uh, in the system? system? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you're kind of limited for a while, and uh, you continue to be. You do a lot of uh, setting up of the ring and taking down the ring. Yeah. You clean things, you wait for the senpais to come, like, be there, and then you have to wait for them to leave before you can leave. Ooh, whoa. Look, there's more food! Yes. More food. That's what we got here. What do you have here? Oh, tri tip, rice, and elote. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, so we're at the park's finest, too, by the way. That's where we're hosting this interview. Yes. So, that's why we're eating meats. Okay, I'm just gonna grab one because yes. I am hungry. So I'm gonna eat this straight up. Hi, meat. Bam. This oh isn't an God. ASMR or AMS. <laughs> Should we like. Nom, nom, meat's delicious. Oh, I'm eating on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you I'm so excited. Oh. Do you wanna get some? I do. I do, do it, do it. Get some and I will ask you a question okay. while you're getting the meat. <laughs> Alright, so you set, learn to set up the ring and clean and stuff. Yep. And then how long before you like move up? I mean, you kind of, I mean, do you move up? Do you ever move up? Do you have, <laughs> I feel like the hierarchy is always there. So, but you know, then there's new people and then they start to take over. So I guess, yeah, you do move up. Um, I think it, I don't know. Oh. I have no idea. I have Got no it. clear time for when I move up, but also it was a little different for me because I was a foreigner. Yeah. And because I was in a widow tie. What is that? This is the, my um, my heel faction that I was in. Oh. So actually, 
my after my debut match, I was pulled into Monster Gun, which means like Monster Team, Monster Army. Yeah. And that was run by、uh, Kyoko Kimura. And now they're really strict with kayfabe in Japan. Yeah. Hopefully this doesn't get translated into Japanese, so like Japanese fans don't like riot from me like spilling too much knowledge. Oh, I hope not. But you're not affiliated, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, this is hypothetical. So yeah. <laughs> Well, so, allegedly, <laughs> like、um, they're really strict, so you can't have the、uh, the heels showing off, like or being, being seen, friends with, being friends the, with the, the baby, baby faces. And so, like I would be, I'd, I'd be able to set up the ring,、uh -huh. but I wouldn't be able to take it down because like fans would be around. And so, like、oh. little by little, I was kind of being separated from the group. I wasn't allowed to like join in on group pictures or like go hang out with them. Like it was really, really strict.、Oh. And so the monster group only had me and Kimura, and technically alpha female, but she left already. So at that point, it was just the two of us. And so for a while, it was like, Oop, well, it's just me and Kimura. I can't be included with anything else. And like I had at least been friends with、um, Momo and Hiromi, so it was like. Oh, I want to hang out with y'all, but I can't.、Um, until <laughs> Axe Yasukawa came back, and like then Oedo Tai was formed, and、oh. there were foreigners coming in. And then it was like, okay, this is not so lonely. Yeah. <laughs> Now you have friends and family.、Yeah. So like, who are some notable people in your fac in that faction?、Um, that like people who watch WWE would know. Oh, well, I feel like everyone kind of knows actively. <laughs> Uh -huh. um, but then I guess Heidi Loveless was in it.、Um, I, I mean, there's a couple of the Nikki Nikki Storm is in WWE now as well. I mean, Kaylee Ray Viper was in it at one point.、Um, Inferno, can you do the translation then for WWE?、Um, sorry, I'm thinking. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, we had a lot. We had Thunder Rosa, Holiday. Um, Starfire, Mexico. We had so many. There's a lot of people. I mean, it's probably like one of the biggest factions that exist for women's pro wrestling. I can't list everyone. I can, no, 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 but, but that yeah, would take a lot of time. No, and I, I'm trying to lead here, but it's kind of like, oh, because the ones that I know from the top of my head, like I know their WWE names, so it's like Nikki Cross、uh -huh. and then、um, oh, Nikki Storm, yeah, yeah、okay. and Ruby Riot,、mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. So like, how do you know this? Yeah. I was like, like get their new names. Yeah, I didn't think you would know. So, <laughs> so I was like, Berto, you got it, you got it.、Uh, but you're my mentor. <laughs> I just want to say that all the time. Mentor. Mentor is hilarious. <laughs> Wait, so. If you got into pro wrestling when you're in Japan, were you a fan when you were a kid? When you're like growing up? I mean, no, but. I had seen an image of、uh, Paul Hogan and Ric Flair, and I thought that was neat. But basically, I hadn't really seen it until I was in Japan, and the,、oh. and the first thing I saw. But you know what? That might not be completely true because I think I saw it in passing a little bit. But I wasn't. It didn't call to me because,、yeah. like, it's. I thought it was neat, but、yeah. I, maybe if I had seen more of it, I would have been into it. But like, it's just、yeah. like, oh, Spartan people. Yeah.、Neat. But I could just watch Ben Hur, and that's what I'm allowed to watch. So I'll just do that.、Uh, You weren't allowed to watch wrestling. I wasn't allowed to watch a lot of TV. <laughs> you weren't allowed to watch TV. I mean, not a lot. I could、oh. watch things like Sound of Music, Disney stuff. You, did you have like strict Filipino parents who、yes. controlled your television? Yes. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Lion King. <laughs> it sounds like you had parents like Mike, like Mike's parents growing up wouldn't let him watch The Simpsons. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons because there is some like news story that said The Simpsons was bad. Yeah, yeah. I think、um, my parents saw the same thing, <laughs> and that is foreign to me because I had parents that didn't pay attention to what I watched on television,、mm -hmm. so I watched everything. My parents let me watch Three's Company and Benny Hill as a child. <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs> And you have like complicated relationships now as an adult. You're like, maybe I need to invite my neighbors over for dinner. Wink, wink, and, and play yakety sax. <laughs> you run around in a circle.、Oh, man. I well, need my landlord to hear, overhear things and be confused about the context. <laughs> and be like slightly homophobic or not really, because like the only reason Jack could live there was because he was allegedly gay. Yeah, because guys and girls can't live in the same house. Yep, complicated. Yeah, not problematic. At all, but I don't know how this became a podcast about Three's Company. But、uh, sure, I, I feel like Three's Company has affected all of us significantly. I mean, I did want, I want my.
my entire wardrobe to look like Mrs. Roper one day. I just want to wear all the dusters <laughs> in several patterns. Maybe I should change my like entrance music to like, come on, knock on my door. Uh, that would be amazing. Not a way for you. Does a wolf knock on doors? No. We does a wolf on them. have doors? Never. No. <laughs> One of these questions, I don't know if I wrote this, I probably did it. It says, what was it like in Japan, wrestling in Japan? Painful. How did the wolf emerge? Um, wrestling in Japan? Painful. Painful? Men. Why is it painful? Um, is it because they wrestle, wrestle strong style? Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Um, I feel like, you know, I get wear and tear here, but it's not as like, um, terrible. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it's nice. I mean, but I also appreciate it over there. I um, I I've, I've learned that like I don't really care how hard or intense it is as long as it looks good. <laughs> ah. um, I don't know how much I'm supposed to say because of like the K-Fape thing, but I feel like yeah. K-Fape's okay here. Question yeah. Mark? I feel like over here like the nerds, I include myself in that. We know. <laughs> like we get it. Uh-huh. Um but uh, Berto and I were like on this podcast called The Geek Inventive and we talked about wrestling on it. Mm-hmm. And um, I mentioned how like I like Japanese wrestling because I like strong style. Mm-hmm. So I think that is growing up in the 80s and then like watching a lot of action movies and things getting yes. blown up mm-hmm. and people doing a lot of ass kicking. Mm-hmm. So I like it when it looks like ass kicking. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of times like when I watch like WWE, I kind of get out of the moment because like things get botched and I'm like, Hey dude, you like totally <laughs> Like at least when I watch like Japanese wrestling, I'm like, no, you really got hit in the face. <laughs> like, no, 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 no you yeah. got hit in the face. <laughs> Especially if you fuck up and you really you got hit in the face. face. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm just like, oh. <laughs> this also said, oh, oh, the wrestling. wolf, yeah. Oh, the wolf, yeah. Um, it was during my test. Oh. So, um, did you have to like create a gimmick in your test? No, oh. it wasn't that. Like it's just I did my test, and my um, one of the things that you have to do is uh, spar with your senpais, and it was my last senpai, and I pinned her, and I let out like a celebratory howl. Like I don't know why I was like, oh, that's so awesome. And like afterwards, I had to give a speech about like why I wanted to be a wrestler. Mm. And so I had to do that all in Japanese because no one spoke English. Um, wow, was that extra hard for you? A bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I could communicate, but, like, complex things, I, you know, I'm still basic. I mean, even now, like, though my vocabulary has gone up, it's still basic in comparison. Yeah. You know? um, afterwards, though, um, the promoter came up to me and was just like, okay, so what's your, what's your ring name? And I was like, ah... Uh, Chris Wolf, the Black Wolf, and I was just like, yeah, because it's either that or it's gonna be Christmas, you know, <laughs> like more Chris. But then in Christmas, I can be like, it's Christmas. Oh my God, can you be Christmas Wolf? Maybe, maybe I will for this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll come out with like red and green paint on my face. Yeah, and you wear like a little Santa, Santa hat. hat. Yeah, with a little belt. Oh, wait, no, that's what the elves wear. No, okay, fine. Santa, yeah. Santa hat. Santa hat. <laughs> yeah, you can be a wolf that like ate the reindeer. That's yes. a little more. Morbid, but oh, you know like that. that could work, right? No, it totally works. I'm into that because reindeer is like meat, and like a wolf would eat a reindeer. Absolutely. I'm imagining this. Yeah. I mean, if the reindeer was you know resting and tired and not flying, totally. Yeah, I could see the logic behind this. Your Christmas wolf would go down your chimney and eat your kids. Yeah. Oh, that's good one. Hey, children. <laughs> this is my address. You should write to me with an address on the return envelope. Instead of presents, oh, if you're good or bad, it doesn't matter. I just eat you. <laughs> <laughs> that I sounds like, like Krampus. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so full. Yes. Oh, it's so good. I'm gonna eat this cornbread though. Do it. Do it. So, how do you react when you see your Filipino fans? Surprised. Yeah? Yeah. Because I mean, like, I kind of do things because, like, I just like doing this shit. And then the fact that anyone notices or, like, encourages me blows my mind. And then the fact that, you know, people can relate to it and, like, feel like, mm, I think, okay, 
So I, I was thinking this, right? One of the things I reason why I didn't connect with WWE is because I didn't see anyone that I could relate to. That looked like you. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe when I saw it in Japan, there these little girls who they're like little Asian girls. Exactly. And you are I not an that. Asian girl, or a little Asian girl. Well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a wolf. They look but like yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> but so like the idea that maybe I gave that to someone else. That makes me feel good. Totally. Yeah. And I think now, especially now, visibility for Filipinos in different fields. Yeah. I think that's really important. And um, I feel happy to be a part of that, though I also feel like I'm not necessarily a good role model because I'm just like, do what you fucking want. No, that's down a with good society. Role. Everything that's is a lie. We're all gonna die. Yeah. Die, 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 die. Yes. Die, die. yes. <laughs> I believe all of those things. These are things that we should tell people. Because they're facts. <laughs> Hashtag wolf facts. <laughs> <laughs> So what we've learned today is we're gonna die, 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 we're gonna die. die. <laughs> Eat meat. <laughs> Hashtag facts. <laughs> Wolf facts. You are now subscribed to Wolf facts. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to our new podcast, Dirty Cookies. <laughs> Wolf facts. <laughs> Dirty Cookies. Wolf facts. <laughs> sounds excellent and erotic. I'm and getting <laughs> hungry. You know I'm eating. Let me give you some cookies then. <laughs> Dirty cookies. <laughs> Poison cookies that you're gonna die. And then I eat you. This is wonderful. Oh, look at this. See, we always get it to the end. Then We're a full pizza. circle. <laughs> because that's what wolves do. They eat the every week. <laughs> I'm not calling you guys weak. I'm sorry. I'm taking it back. You're just human. <laughs> So now that you're, so you're here in the States, right? Or like, I know you're kind of, or like being nomadic, like, what, what do you miss about Japan? Because how long were you there? I was in Japan for six years. Wow. I miss the familiarity, uh, my friends. I miss the convenience of their convenience stores having everything from like underwear to pet food to food. And like, you know, it, there's a convenience of living in Japan. It's yeah. very, very orderly. And like, I miss my friends. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I am having a really good time. Sometimes I feel really, really lonely and scared because I don't know what's next. But at the same time, maybe I always felt that way, even when I was in Japan. So, uh, existential <laughs> crisis. Existential crisis. <laughs> Hashtag <Wolf X. laughs> All right. So you're gonna die, Eat and we're meat. all alone. We're all alone. <laughs> existential crisis. And this is the making of a professional wrestler. <laughs> so that works out. And Kushida smells like Gatsby wipes. This is a it very like I feel very like I'm learning a lot right now. <laughs> so I hope this is entertaining everybody. <laughs> and at the same time making you feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> so like maybe this won't be an uncomfortable question. Maybe this will be a happy question. Okay. How was the Filipino food in Japan? I didn't get to eat any. Oh. I didn't think there'd be any, but I don't know why this question was. <laughs> oh, but because like some people said that there was, I just I never happened upon it. Oh. Um, and so the first time that I had Filipino again in like six years was in London. Oh wow! Yeah. What was the restaurant in London? Uh, there were two, and I went to I can't remember the name of the other one, but the one that I do remember was called Oh My Gulai. Oh My Gulai. Yes. That's a big ass name Isn't it? for a restaurant. Yeah, and it was vegan Filipino food. What? I know. Mind blown. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. But you're a wolf. And you're eating vegan Filipino food? I'm trying to get close to vegans. Oh. Mm. So you can eat them later? Shh. Oh, I got it. I got it. Yeah, full circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right. Bruno, do you have any questions that you want to ask? Yeah, you have them all. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> But I just want to throw it at you because I'm Mike. Do you have any questions that you would like to ask? Mike is chewing food, so no. <laughs> uh, what about? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. She has a list of I questions list. she's going through. What are the challenges of wrestling different styles of matches? Um, like intergender and ladder matches, yeah. etc., etc. I mean, the biggest thing it always depends on who you're gonna work with. 
Um, everyone has their own style, they want to do their things, and you just kind of have to adapt and um, make sure that you know how to react and take certain moves, like whatever they want to do. And everyone has like different ideas or stories that they want to tell. Um, I think. I think the biggest challenge for me in particular is like learning the English names for moves because I only know the Japanese ones or I don't know the name of it at all and I'm just like okay. trying to explain it yeah yeah you kind of have to like at least like wrestling is somewhat of an international language in the sense that you can at least move through it and figure it out because you're like all right so I'm gonna go to the top of the rope and then I'm gonna do like the spinning thing yeah. and then I fall on you and yep. then you, like, like, I, that... <laughs> I mean I guess we could do that and then they're like what is the spinning thing and it's like oh fuck well I have to I guess I have to do it <laughs> you're yeah. like I spin like you know like a flip like a thing <laughs> no I mean mostly I spin I dance around and you grab my tail and then I make you eat it <laughs> Wait. Wait, so you're saying you have a tail? I do. Yeah. It's very big and bushy and impressive. Because you are a wolf. Yes. Jesus. And I think healthy. the audience needs to learn. <laughs> yeah. a wolf that will go, when she's Christmas wolf, will go down your chimney and eat you. Yes. Even if you're good. <laughs> Most especially if you're bad. <laughs> if you're a kid. Because <laughs> life isn't fair. <laughs> Wow. Well, maybe it is, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> the most existential episode we've had. Life is not fair. You're all gonna die. Eat meat. Wolf facts. Yep. Wolf facts. <laughs> this is the best. I'm enjoying this so much. Uh, oh, this is a good question. After wrestling, mostly in Japan, what are the best and worst aspects of traveling everywhere to wrestle? Um... Best things, meeting new people, uh, both in the ring and out. I love meeting wrestlers that I've only seen online, which is really neat. Who are um, some of these people that you've met that you're like, yes, we are now more than internet friends? Yes. Um, oh, there, there are a couple now. I forgot, though. Oh, I put you on the you spot. Did. I am so sorry. Damn you. Um, but I, I How want about to Birdo? Share. Birdo, you met Birdo on the internet, right? Kind of? Yeah. And me? Yes. I think I met you on the internet. Yes. Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I went to Shimmer recently and like there were a lot of girls that I had only seen online but never really got to interact with until that uh, that weekend. And you're right, I actually have like a lot more online friends that are uh, wrestling fans because I think I feel pretty comfortable talking to them just because growing up I was a pretty big computer nerd and I was just like always on forums or on IRC. Which forums? Were you like on in Pinoy Pinai? No. I don't know what that one was. Oh, that was the AOL chat room. Oh, that's cute. Um, Asian I, Avenue? I think, oh, I had one of those. <laughs> oh, shit. I forgot about that. What else was there? I was on a Something Live Awful. Journal? Something Awful. Oh, my God, I remember that. Yeah, um, and then I was on IRC in, like, anime rooms and stuff. Um, what is your favorite anime? Ah, uh, it, so it's, like, I want to say it's Serial Experiments Lane, which is kind of, like, this... Dark and morbid yes. one. Yeah, it, it again it deals with existential crisis, but also the blurring of like reality and the internet. Um, and uh, I, I, I don't know. It's like one of those things. If you don't get into it on your first fourth episode, you're not gonna get into it because it's weird. But um, I like that one, and I like Furikuri. <laughs> oh, we were we're watching the new season. Oh, there's a new season. Yeah, it took like 10 million years to get there. Oh my! But now it's on Adult Swim. Is it good? It's good. Okay. It's a girl this time instead oh. of a boy. Does she also grow things out of her head when she gets yes. erotically excited? Yes. Basically, it's, instead of in the first series where it was a boy going through puberty and yes. having robots out of his head, now it's a girl going through puberty. And with, robots come out of her vagina? I think it's still her head. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not her vagina. I think that would be painful. <laughs> also, how would you animate that? But it's Japan. I bet that could happen. Do you want to know what my first anime was? What? I don't know the name of it, but like I walked into the room where my friend's brothers were watching this anime of this, maybe it was a hentai, but um, this girl gave birth to demons that would protect her and she was like pregnant and then they wouldn't do, when they were done protecting her, they would go back into her. Is and, your vagina? I, I guess so. Wow. Mike, do you know this? Does this sound familiar? <laughs> Which one? No, I don't think it was that one. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow, both of you knew that. Okay, people who are listening, if you know this anime of a pregnant lady who gives birth to demons, <laughs> let us know. Yeah. Tell us, and then we can tell Chris Wolf, and then she will know what that was. And now we know why she has an existential crisis. <laughs> Christ, I. Christ, 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 I want that so bad to go viral. <laughs> Hashtag wolf facts. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. I, I mean, I don't know if you will have an answer to this. But okay. Is there any specific Filipino dish that helps in your training regimen? Salut. Nice. Perfect. Synergy. I should make more shirts. You should. You should make more shirts. You should make more shirts. One day, we're trying to get these shirts done. <laughs> Cover people's bits. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long, what time are we at, Mike? How long have we been going? 33. Oh, that's pretty good. I feel like, oh, wait, no, I have, have I gone through all the questions? Oh, no, I have two more questions. Yes. Sweet. This is Berto's question. Okay. Here. Hopefully I asked this right. There aren't a lot of Filipino wrestlers <laughs> and even less Filipina wrestlers. Right. What did you take away from wrestling Shotzi Blackheart last December? Oh. I was gonna say she has a cute butt. Um, um, the takeaway is cute butt, yes. Um, Filipinos are athletic. She can sing. Oh, she can sing? Yeah. So I've watched videos and you can sing. We should totally do karaoke one day. Totally. You know what? I was in the, the, the dressing room and I think I was singing something and then she like looked at me and she's like, are you Filipino? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, thought so. <laughs> <laughs> like thought so in a good way or yeah, thought yeah. so in like, a, ooh, what are you doing here? Thought so all Filipinos sing or play instruments. Oh. Or dance. Do you play an instrument? Um, I kind of play Were you piano forced guitar? to play the piano? Yes. See, yeah. that's the right answer. Yeah. Forced to play the piano. Everybody. <laughs> yes. And do you also, what was the other one? Uh, I forgot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. yeah. So, future plans. What are your future plans? Survive. Survive. Find a home. Buying a home. Wow, no one can do that now, but yes, <laughs> buying a home. Oh, I didn't even say buy, I meant like find a home. Oh, find a home. <laughs> um, I don't know. I really don't know. Pay off student loans. Oh, um, yeah. All those darn student loans. Who knew Wolf had loans? I know. That's what we get for trying to be good humans. Oh, and stupid educated. Humans. Yeah. I mean, don't. you should go to school, but don't go to school? I don't know. You'll still get eaten by a Christmas yeah. wolf. Go to school in another country? <laughs> oh, my God. No, I mean, America. No. Ah. <laughs> Do you think possibly, maybe, we would see you in like things like uh, on our television stateside? Like, uh, yeah. maybe? Are you inviting me to live inside your TV? Oh, sure. Yeah, if you can. It's flat screen, though, so you'd have oh, to be very thin. I'm, I'm not there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've, I've like, got too much ch junk in the trunk. Oh, it's okay. So do I. <laughs> but, like, I'm trying to say, like, has, like, a certain uh, man named Vince McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> like, or even someone with the initials H H H contacted you, possibly? Or maybe a May Young Classic 2.0? I don't know. Situation? I mean, like, through my Tinder account? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Would you be down to do that? I mean, I I think so. It looks like it's fun, but I also feel like I am um I have very little self control. What does that mean? That means like I will throw people into the audience and then spit on the audience and then. That seems totally like a show that I would watch. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. If if uh, I don't know, are you saying that's not G rated? <laughs> well, well, I like the parties you go to. <laughs> um, yeah, I I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I could go, but I also feel like I don't know. Oh. I don't know what 
it's good. I'm like trying to learn as much as I can about this wrestling world because it's all new. Yeah. Because how long have you been wrestling? Um, four years. Four years. In August it'll be four years. Oh. Yeah. And like three three months have been outside of Japan. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Crazy. Maybe you could do something on like a underground of lucha. <laughs> that would be neat. That would be neat. I would jump off of tall things. Yeah, you could jump off of things and, and people and spin and do that flip thing. <laughs> Maybe, right? I know Berta's like Chris has never done a flip thing. <laughs> Chris only does like round off. Okay, so what if you wrestled like a box and you broke it? I mean, that could work. That's right? my daily life. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, I think I'm going through my questions. Okay. I think I've asked most of them. Cool. Is there a message you want to give to the tea fowlers? We're all gonna die! We're all gonna die. Hashtag wolf facts. So, with that in mind, I just want to send you good vibes and encouragement for whatever shit you're going through as you try to feel your way through this existence. We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. Hashtag Wolfax. Love you. Eat meat. Yeah. Even vegans oh. can do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, where can people find you on the internet? Oh, I'm on Twitter usually because I'm lazy and like to just retweet things. It's uh, at Wolf in Japan. I'm on Instagram at Wolf in Japan. And I have a Facebook page, Chris Wolf Universe, and a YouTube where I kind of vlog on a somewhat regular basis on Wolf Wednesdays. It's uh, Chris Wolf in Japan. Obviously, I didn't think far ahead enough about where I was going. and Because um, now you're yeah. not in Japan. No, I'm not. But your wolf <laughs> spirit is in Japan. Yeah, I was made there. Yes. I was birthed there. So this makes sense and totally appropriate. Absolutely. Yes. I, if you're interested in where I end up in the next, I don't know, year, please follow, like, and subscribe, and um, tell me all about your feelings and your mom's. Yes. She won't eat the, your mom's, maybe. Just you. Yeah. No, I'm going to eat your mom's. Okay. There you go. Because <laughs> we're all going to die. Yep. Hashtag wolf facts. <laughs> Birdo Mantar, where can people find you? I'm on Twitter and Instagram at BrainiacBMC. And that's Brainiac with the K because I'm a rapper that doesn't know how to spell. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we are at TFL Podcast on Instagram, at TFL Podcast on Twitter. This Filipino American Life dot com is our website make those t-shirts uh one day we will make more bullet club shirts because everybody keeps asking and hopefully we can get them done um i don't know when this will come out uh but we'll be at hood slam in two weeks yeah. also we're going to be at new japan pro wrestling also in two weeks yeah. so if you are a bullet club fan and you see somebody in a bullet club shirt say hi we won't eat you because we're not Chris Wolf. But we'll say hi. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Subscribe to This Will Peter Work and Life on iTunes or wherever you find your podcast. Rate us on iTunes. Give us five stars. Buy us coffee. Ko Be our Patreon. Mike, is there anything else I need to end it on? You're shaking your head no. All right. We're going to end this. On a meat chant or a howl? I'll you howl like? you to the meat chant. Okay. Ready? Right. One, two, three. Meat, oh. meat, 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 meat. This Filipino American Life is produced by Michael Nailat. Our intro and outro music is by Roger Habon, aka 10.4 Raj. Resident reality checker Gurley Collado, legal advisor Rianne Fajardo, and graphic design by Vincent Collier.